Okay, y'all. I am headed to my one year postal appointment. Actually, it's later in the afternoon, but I'm going to study um, somewhere closer to um, where my doctor's office is because um, it's all the way in Miami Beach. So I'll be studying closer to there um, at a coffee shop closer to the doctor's office. That way I don't miss most of my class. Um, but I'm excited. My surgeon hasn't seen me since I've had the surgery. Like the last time he saw me was like the day after my surgery and he came to see me. Um, my follow-ups have always been with the physician assistant, which is amazing. Um, shout out to Melissa. I'm probably gonna get some flowers for the office um, before I head in. Um, but either way, I'm excited. I know he's gonna be excited to see me because I do not look the same. Um, last time I saw him, I was still groggy from after the surgery. I was in a bad mood. It was afterwards my mom was telling me he was cracking jokes and I was like, Either way, <laughs> I'm excited to see him today. Like, I'm like 90, over 90 pounds down. So, it's going to be interesting. I'm excited. Um, <clears throat> my last, actually, I'm going to talk about my blood work. My last blood work that I did, I did have like an issue with my iron whistle. But, um, I've always had iron issues growing up. Um, it's just that after having the surgery, it became worse. Um, I did have the option to actually do an iron infusion before I had the surgery, um, but then I just figured, like with iron pills, I would have it would I would have been fine. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, my iron actually just got worse and worse and worse. Um, so about a week ago, a week or two ago, I did like an iron infusion. Um, it's when they like infuse the iron straight into your like your system rather than like the pills because the pills weren't like working actually the pill that i took was um hemoplex um <clears throat> which is actually a really good pill it just wasn't working for me um like if anybody has like iron issues hemoplex i'm telling you hemoplex is the way to go because usually when you're taking a lot of iron um it makes you constipated but hemoplex doesn't i know it feels hemi but um, hemoplex doesn't make you constipated and it's like very potent um, but it is really good but it just didn't work for me I'm excited we're gonna see what happens let's go I'll probably um, get back on talk to you guys when I get to a coffee shop show you around the coffee shop I'm studying at it's a really cool coffee shop in Miami Beach um, that I actually have been wanting to go to it's called like Panther Cafe um, yeah, I don't see pictures of it and whatnot, but I actually get to go there today, so I'm excited because of that. Like, it's just an opportunity for me to go ahead and study there while I'm waiting to go to um, my doctor's appointment. And it's raining, like, really bad out here, so I'm trying to actually stay safe. I just passed the call, but I'm not really sure, like, could I vlog and drive? Is that, like, an issue? I don't know. Either way, I'm doing it, um, and I'm not pulled over I'm not arrested so I think we're good you know I'm so excited you guys um I will see y'all again soon when I get to the coffee shop I'll give y'all like a small little tour it's a really cute coffee shop put y'all on
protein and meat brown and sugar, so it's actually good. but I actually don't have class. I have a um, practice test. So today I have to take a practice test. Um, so throughout the course, I take small little practice tests that show me whether or not I'm going up or actually, my to check to see if my score is actually going up or is my, if my score is staying where it's at or is it going down. So um, this is my third practice test. Last time I took a practice test, my score did jump. My score was jumping, but um, I'm kind of nervous about this practice test because there's actually new concepts that's um, added on to this. And this time I'm taking it under the time constraints that I have um, for the test, like on the way it would be on test day. So I'm kind of nervous about that. Um, but in any case, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes fine. Um, I'll probably let y'all know because this vlog is probably going to be a week in my life because I started on Monday, today's Monday, so it might might be a week in my life. I might do an outfit check later, even though my brother's not here to record, he's always in Kentucky, so I might do like an outfit check. Um, but either way, first things first, if I don't get to actually do like an standing outfit check this top, I actually got the black one originally from um, TJ Maxx, but this one I actually got it off of Poshmark because I love the black one so much. I got this one off Poshmark, Poshmark and I got the pink one off Poshmark. So y'all will be seeing tops like this a lot. And headband, Amazon, glasses, Urban Outfitters, and the same watch band. And I'm wearing a pleated skirt from H&M. So yay. So I'm here picking out a flower to bring to the doctor's office and it's like flowers galore at the fresh market. Like you guys look at that. They even have peonies but it's only like baby peonies and they only have like two of them. But those are my absolute favorite flowers. Those hydrangeas and orchids. I think I'm going to get an orchid to bring to the office. Nice little orchid. So y'all, I'm shooting on my phone right now because I had too many stuff to carry up, but I got this for the physician assistant, the small little um, orchid, and I got the, the big one for the whole team because they have been amazing. Amazing. Look at how cute this is. Just look at it. Back from my appointment. <laughs> And it went amazing. Like, I cried. I literally cried while talking to the surgeon. Like, he didn't even recognize me. <laughs> but it was amazing. Like, I don't even know how to explain this. I actually want to sit down and have a talk about this, but I guess I'll talk about it because I'm stuck in traffic. So, here goes. Um, I rarely have time to just sit down and talk. So, I guess this is when I'm gonna have time to talk like while driving but um people don't understand like so um well if you didn't know I had weight loss surgery I had the vertical sleeve gastrectomy aka VSG um one year ago 
I had it June 23rd, 2020. Um, it wasn't something I wanted to do. It was something I had to do um, for my health, for my life, because I wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't the case. Um, at the beginning of last year, January, um, I started having these headaches these weird headaches and it just progressed progressed until one morning I woke up and bleeding just bleeding blood just gushing out of my nose and bl big clots of blood gushing out of my nose and we didn't know what it was we didn't know what it was why it was happening until we went to the hospital to check my blood pressure and my blood pressure was to the moon really high okay <laughs> So, um, they checked my blood pressure, it was really high, and then that's when I started realizing I had, I, I didn't have a primary care physician at the time, um, so I was just like, okay, my mom was just like, okay, you need to get a primary care physician, so I went to the one that she goes to at the same hospital where I had the surgery, um, so he, he suggested that I did the surgery, and I was like, no, I don't want anybody cutting on me. Like, I didn't tell that to him, but in my head, I'm just like, no, not happening. So he was just like, okay, I'm gonna put you on a pill. Let me tell you guys, while I was walking out of the hospital, I always check whenever somebody, whenever a doctor prescribes me something, I always check to see like, what it is, like who's used it, was it effective, yada, yada. And then when I checked, it was, discontinued because quite a few people actually died while taking it so I was like okay not happening I'm not taking this I called the pharmacy just to see if they actually had it and it was like that thing has been discontinued I was like that's what I thought like I checked online and that's what it said like it said it's been discontinued so then I was like okay I'm not doing that and I called the doctor he's gonna be another one I am a struggling college student at the time and the the prescription that he gave was extremely expensive it was just not gonna work for me so I was just like okay um, let's just go and do this on my own so I started working out different stuff like that but I was so sick you guys like the bleeding didn't stop like the nose bleeding didn't stop until they had to like cauterize my nose so like the bleeding stopped like that's like burn like the nerve or whatever and it was interesting um that was an interesting experience <laughs> um and then so so on and so forth like covid happened and um i started still working out walking the thing about it is like i've always been like i would say overweight um but at this point like i'm morbidly obese okay so then i start walking start exercising not start because that, that's something i've always done but then it wasn't enough um, th of course there was a diet change that needed to happen um, and then I realized like you know okay so what if we go down this surgery road what if we go down this surgery road so I started doing my research and different stuff like that talking to different people who's, like who've done the surgery and whatnot and getting a little more information on it and different ones because you know there's like the bypass and then there's the sleeve and whatnot and I okay so then I made up my mind that I like if I was gonna do it I was gonna do the sleeve um, so I started looking for doctors in the area that do the sleeve and whatnot and I happened upon Dr. Ben David um, here at Mount Sinai in Miami Florida and listen you guys I went in there and I was nervous I'm not gonna lie um, but I got in there and he treated me as if I was his own like daughter like his own kid and he told me like if I didn't know you needed the surgery I wouldn't do it on you like and that's what like he gave me all my stats and different stuff like that and that's when I realized like how bad like my weight had gotten and he was just like if I knew you didn't need the surgery I wouldn't do it for you like it's because I know you need it like when you're on the table I treat you as if you're my kid and like he gave me his stats and like high success rate and when I, he even does it on like teenagers who need it and whatnot and I was like so I know this man is careful I know that he will be doing everything in his power to make sure that you know everything goes well um so prior to actually going to Dr. Ben David I'm skipping over um, I had really bad heartburn, like acid heartburn, like, like to the point to where like, it was bad. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, but all I can tell you guys, it was bad. Like the heartburn was killing me. I was sleeping, think that it would, it was choking me. A lot of it was a lot of blood that went down into my stomach after all the nosebleeds, but it got really bad. So I went and did an endoscopy, um, to check, they went to check to see if there was like any ulcers or whatever, like down there, like between because of all the acid coming up 
yo and then while I was having after the endoscopy I woke up and I had like a little like a little bump on my lip or whatnot and I was just like okay that's kind of weird that's suspicious that's weird okay but then I was like yeah, I figured it would just go down right y'all let me tell you it did not go down okay it turns out the anesthetics they use with the I guess the blood pressure medicine I was taking, I was taking um, Lisinopro at the time. Y'all, listen, I probably will put a picture here, maybe. I mean, I posted it on Instagram before, I probably put a picture here somewhere. So y'all could see like what ended up happening, like the progression of my face swelling up, okay? So like, it was just like, at first it was like one side that was swollen, like my lip, and then it was just my bottom lip, right? I can't remember, it was like either the bottom or the top. That was swelling first the bottom the bottom started swelling first and then the top said the next day the top was just like like I woke up and my cousin was there with me and I was just like is it better and then she just looks at me and she goes let me just take a picture she takes a picture y'all and my top lip swells and this is the second day and I'm admitted in the hospital at this point because um, I couldn't take Afrin because Afrin would have brought my blood pressure even higher than it already was my aunt actually caught that. She's a nurse practitioner. She caught that. Like, they were going to give me Afrin. She's just like, wait, isn't Afrin going to raise her blood pressure? And her blood pressure is already high. Y'all are giving me very much unprofessional vibes. I'm just kidding, y'all. They were great. They just almost missed it. Um, either way, <laughs> um, like, after she spoke to them and whatnot, like, they're just like, okay, they gave me, like, Benadryl, but then it wasn't going down. My blood pressure was still high and whatnot. So, afterwards, she was just like, they kept me in the hospital. They admitted me to the hospital. I was in the hospital for three days for an allergic reaction, okay, to medicine. My blood pressure wouldn't go down. Um, so, finally, they switched the medicine I was taking. I got switched over to Amlodipine, 5 milligrams. Um, it worked, but my blood pressure was really high. Like, my blood pressure stayed, like, the bottom stayed at 100, 106, 105, 110, 112, like, 115. Like, that was the bottom of my, my, um, blood pressure, like, all the time, anytime it was checked. Okay, so, um, I was just like, okay, I might need to have this surgery. And then that's when I started doing research, um, and... I went to Dr. Ben David and I spoke to my family. We had a family meeting and whatnot. And then we moved on with the process of having the surgery, y'all. Okay, um, I had the surgery on June 23rd, which is my dad's birthday. My poor dad was sitting in the waiting room and he couldn't even see me because of COVID. He was sitting in the waiting room all day. I didn't see him until two days later when I went home. Um, my family was super supportive, okay, like after the fact, after the surgery. Super supportive. And we, I know they're all watching, so hi fam. Either way, um, yeah, like I got home, my brothers helped me up the stairs to my room and whatnot, and it was a hard time, but now I can honestly say it was worth it. My cousin would come and literally take care of me. Shout out to Tamar. If you ever need a nurse, she'll be there for you. My aunt, who's a nurse practitioner, my sisters, my adopted sisters, everybody like stood by me and was cheering me on. And then that is why today when I was talking to my surgeon and talking about like little non-scale victories such as um, being able to ride a roller coaster. I remember um, wanting to ride a roller coaster a while back and y'all, epic fell. Like I tried to ride a roller coaster. I was actually just taking my little cousin on the roller coaster and um, I couldn't fit. And they were just like, um, could you find someone else to ride with him? Because he was too young to ride by himself. And I had to call my brother over to ride with him. And it was embarrassing. It was, I was so embarrassed, y'all. I was embarrassed. Yeah, really bad. Either way, um, after the surgery, pro probably like, honestly, um, two months after the surgery, if even, y'all, I went to Bush Gardens. And I was so nervous, actually. I went to, I went, Island of Adventure. That's when I did my first roller coaster. Um, I went there and then like I was super nervous. I went with my best friend and I was just like, okay, so I, it's gonna be my first time like riding a roller coaster, y'all. And she was just like, okay, like let's do it. I was super nervous and um, cause I one reason why I was nervous is because I didn't think I was gonna fit the chair. Okay, I did not think I was gonna fit the chair, you guys. So when I got there and y'all. And I fit the chair and the and the button clicked, y'all. And then I was living my actual best life. 
the next time we went to Orlando, y'all, we went to Bush Gardens, I rolled the whole park because I knew I could fit the chairs. And that's a non-scale victory that people who have not struggled with weight will not understand. Like, I say this all the time. People who have not struggled with weight will not understand your weight loss journey. They won't understand. A lot of people think they want to lose the weight more than you do. There's no one who wants to lose the weight more than the person who has the weight on their back, okay? No one wants to lose the weight more because they're the ones struggling. They're the ones waking up with the bad knees and the, ba and the hurting back and whatnot. No one wants to lose the weight more. Um, but I remember my aunt said this to me once. She was just like, I understand your struggle because um, she lost a lot of weight herself. And she was saying that um, sometimes it's hard for people to understand that the thing that's killing you is also the thing that you need to keep you alive, which is food, okay? And that was like one of the most powerful things she's ever told me. Um, but with the surgery, you have to take like nutrition classes and they teach you how to develop a different relationship with food. Like, my relationship food is completely different now because I understand what to eat. I understand when to eat what I'm eating, how to eat what I'm eating and whatnot. And um, a lot of times you just, you just kind of don't understand that before you somebody teaches you that. Like, before the surgery, and a lot of people think the surgery is the easy way out. It is not, okay? By no way of the imagination is the, is the surgery the easy way out, okay? Because it's tough, okay? It is tough as nails, okay? So, um, yeah, so before I had the surgery, I, I'm, I'm everywhere. I know I'm everywhere. Like, I'm talking, the timeline is not chronological. Either way, um, before I had the surgery, I did lose 30 pounds because I was working out consistently. Not eating, I was sick, okay? I was sick. Um, not eating as much, in and out of the hospital, um, in and out of the hospital, and, um, that's when, after the surgery, everything went well, everything went fine, after my three month, I had lost 50 pounds, and then so on and so forth, it's just been a progression of amazing things, um, I'll talk more about it in, like, other videos, but that's my weight loss surgery, and now to be one year out, one year out like I think back and I think what if I didn't do the surgery a year ago I would either be dead or still in the condition that I was like of course there were changes being made but then growing up there's always like the yo-yo dieting like anybody who's struggled with weight will tell you like there's the yo-yo dieting where you're dieting and yeah it's working for a little bit but then like something happens and then you're off the wagon just like that it only takes like one thing to just completely detour you like detour de detour you either way that's my little weight loss search that's my little weight loss um i would say story um there's a lot more but that's the gist of it i will be talking more about um different things that i do um to maintain the weight loss i still want to lose 40 pounds um with the surgeon's office um 85 pounds down but before then I had lost a little bit of weight like I said I, you're always losing weight you're always gaining weight you're always losing weight but you're always gaining weight on top of that too so then that yo-yo dieting that up and down it's like detrimental to your body even so yeah that's my little um, <laughs> weight loss sir like weight loss story I hope you guys enjoyed it um, I will be making this will be one video. I thought I was going to do like a week in my life, but I think I'll just make a, my one year anniversary of weight loss surgery video and talk uh, instead of making like a week of my life. Um, my next video will probably be like a Father's Day vlog because we're doing something really nice for my dad. Actually, I shouldn't say this in the vlog because he's probably going to watch it. So yeah. <laughs> Either way, um, I'm super excited to be talking to you guys. Y'all are amazing. Subscribe to hear more about my journey, um, to hear more about law school, to hear more about my weight loss journey, to hear more about fashion, to hear about how much money you're going to spend after you have the surgery, to those who are, who are aspiring to have it. Like, we'll talk about that in another video. I'm, let me not, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I am so excited y'all are here and hearing my story. Um, I cried, y'all. I cried so much, like, talking to my surgeon today, because I was telling him, like, the different non-scale victories, and I was just so thankful to them, because they've been amazing, like, 
y'all don't understand um like I'm gonna cry again but they were just let's just say God is good God is indeed good y'all to have gotten me this far I didn't think I was gonna make it this far like people don't understand when I say that I did not think I was gonna make it this far and I remember when I graduated last year I heard my mom talking to my aunt and she was just like yo she graduated and like she's doing better like oh, I'm just so happy and I'm so thankful to my family to God to my surgeon to my doctor to everyone who's contributed to me being here now I still have this is just the beginning of my journey, y'all. I still have 40 pounds to lose, um, but it's, it's live, you guys. I'm excited. Hey, y'all. I found a mirror so I could do an outfit check. My headband is from Amazon. My glasses are from Urban Outfitters. My top is Poshmark. My skirt is from H&M. And my shoes are actually Walmart. And, of course, we have the same hand, um, watch, handband, wristband, um, and of course, Kate Spade satchel. I'm here at Macy's um, in the Ralph Lauren section. I'm trying to find a Ralph Lauren white skirt. I think I found one. I'm not sure if it's my size, but I guess if I do get it, I you'll, it will be featured in another video. Um, well, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, and it was nice talking to you. Remember, it is nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice.